Hey guys, Slavey here, back with another Alpine Online video. During my last build video, which was the insanely fast Claren Blade build, I asked you guys what build I should cover next, and you guys answered with Boltcasters in the comments. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the Boltcasters build, which according to some of you, is even faster than the Great Axe. Now that is a very bold statement, but having played the Boltcasters myself for the past two months, I must say that I can understand where this is coming from. What makes this build great for beginners is that you don't need any specializations or masteries to start off since you have all the skills available to you at tier 4 already. But just because it's good for beginners doesn't mean it's not good for the more advanced players. In fact, it has become one of my personal solo dungeon farming builds ever since you guys recommended it. Aside from clearing dungeons insanely fast, I also find it very fun to play. Newer players on my Discord often say they don't do as much damage as what's being shown in build videos. Therefore, this time I want to give you the exact numbers and reasons in what makes for the differences in damage. So this build video will be a bit more technical than usual, but hopefully teach you a thing or two aside from this very strong PvE and solo dungeon build. Later in this video, I popped the tier 6 solo dungeon map in the red zone. I'm also faction flagged and have a double bladed staff with me, along with a guardian helmet and some healing potions. If you don't know why all of this is, you must check out my previous video which explains why. If you don't, you're simply missing out on a lot of crucial information that makes for extra rewards, safety and progress. I'll link that one in the description below. You can also see the equipment I'm using, which is equal to tier 6 and 7. Since I am doing a tier 6 map, which is a bit more difficult than a regular tier 6 dungeon, this seems pretty fair to me. One thing you need to know about the Boltcaster build is that your weapon is the only base source of damage. Nothing else in this build has any abilities that do any damage of their own. Instead, everything that's part of this build is there to buff and enhance the damage of your Boltcasters. This is done through the passives, skills and stats on the other items. So the only thing that will increase the base damage of this build are the Boltcasters itself. The bolt casters I'm using in this video are tier 5.2 and have 1300 item power. As you can see, some of the item power on these bolt casters is due to my mastery levels. Based on my research, every additional 100 item power on the bolt casters makes for an increase of about 10% damage per second. So if you barely have any levels in the bolt casters and use a 5.2 just like me, you will be dishing out 20% less damage. Your takeaway from this should be that only the item power of your bolt casters will determine how much damage you will end up doing with this build. So if you want more base damage from this build, you need higher item power on your bolt casters. Nothing else will affect this. So what does everything in this build do for the bolt casters? The big thing here is the Druid Rope, which has the Obsessive Burst skill. When you activate this skill, you get a buff that increases your damage by 6% for 10 seconds. Whilst this skill is active, every time you use an ability, this effect gets multiplied. This effect can stack up to 6 times. So at the maximum stack of 6, you're looking at an increase of 36% in damage. Now what makes this skill even better is that every time you use an ability and get an additional stack, the buff timer actually gets reset. Initial 10 seconds is to build up your stacks and your stacks themselves have a different timer. Only after the last skill usage, within the initial 10 second window, your stacks will start counting down from 10. Basically expanding this skill's lifespan up to 20 seconds. And the sooner you reach the max stacks, the more you will benefit from it. Then you have the Spectre Hood, with the Flash of Insight skill. The sole purpose of this skill is to instantly reset your armor's ability. That very same insane damage modifier, called Obsessive Burst, we just went over. So what you want to do is every time you use Obsessive Burst and have the Flash of Insight available, immediately use it to reset your armor. This way you will be able to use your armor skill more often and with that benefit from the damage buff as much as possible. As for the boots with this build, you take any leather shoes you want for the refreshing sprint skill. This will help lower your cooldowns which is always nice to have but especially nice when trying to get those 6 stacks as soon as possible. The final part of this build is the cape which is the Limher cape. This cape on its own provides enough sustain for this build to not run into any energy issues. Now that we covered the purpose of each different item that forms this build, let's take a look at the Boltcasters itself. On your Q you want to have Explosive Bolt, which has very low cooldown and does quite some AoE damage. You pretty much want to use this skill all the time. 
both for clearing mob packs, getting your stacks up, and even at bosses. On your W, you want to take Sunder Shot. You can sneak this skill in within that 2 second window when your Q is on cooldown. It will simply help with building your stacks up quicker. This skill will help even more when you use it on bosses since it reduces the armor of your target. And then you have the E skill, that Ward Climax, which just might be one of the top DPS skills within the game. This skill starts the channel and hits for a total of 12 times, multiplying the damage with every additional shot and the final shot even hitting twice. It's a very scary skill to walk into when you are transporting, but also an insane boss killer. Make use of this skill as often as you like to, don't limit yourself to using this skill on bosses only. The Deathward Climax is really great to clear single monsters throughout your run as well. The final thing we will look at on the boltcasters is the passive. For this you want to select the well prepared one since your gameplay will primarily be spamming Qs and this passive will reset them for you, making for more AoE damage and quicker stacks. As for the passives on your helmet, rope and shoes, you definitely want damage on your rope, and either more damage on your helmet and shoes or even cooldown. I think the passive choice on your helmet and shoes really depends on whether that little additional damage will make any difference. If you are leaving mobs at the edge of dying every time, you want to take the damage to not waste an additional skill on killing them. Whereas taking the cooldown passive means you will be able to activate your buffs much quicker and dish out more damage overall. I personally use the Avalonian Beast 2 with this build, since I do need a little bit of health regen to consistently run through the dungeon without waiting. And it of course also provides a nice damage bonus, which is always welcome. If you want a more budget food option, you can take the Cabbage Soup or Danglemouth Catfish. As for boss killing, I of course have a stack of tier 4 poison potions with me. So what you typically want to do is activate your armor skill, immediately reset it with your helmet and start building stacks as quick as possible whilst dishing out damage. You do this primarily by using your Q every time it's off cooldown and using your W and shoes in between. Since your E is a channel and a single target skill, it won't contribute to building stacks as good, so you only want to use your E when only one mob is remaining. As for bosses, you could pre-stack and start off with Sunder Shot for the armor reduction, followed by a full E channel. But I personally almost never do that, unless I really have to. A big thanks to all of you recommending this build in the comments previously and even explaining how to go about it. I think it's a really great build and we'll keep on playing it for sure. If you have any build of your own you would like to see featured, just like this one, make sure to write it in the comments below. As always, I hope this video brought you value and wish you good luck in your adventures. I'll see you next time.